Hey y'all, Kenny here. Thanks for joining me. In a couple of my previous videos, uh, I discussed the issue of reduced brass life with the Encore. Uh, it is an issue that in my experience handicaps the rifle uh, because in order to load a cartridge to its full potential, uh, you have to sacrifice your brass. Steve, a subscriber, and I have had some conversations on the subject, and he has offered the Ackley Improved Chamber as a possible solution. I'm going to talk about that in detail a little bit later, but he also suggested that I ask you, the viewer, what your experience is with Brass Life uh, and the Encore. So if you'd take a moment and drop a comment, uh, give some details, what cartridge, what bullet weight, what velocity. If you don't know the velocity, uh, what uh, powder are you using and where on the powder charge are you? Are you at or near max? Are you down at the starting loads or somewhere in the middle? It is a pressure thing. Uh, it is with bottleneck cartridges. So uh, cartridges that operate below 50,000, not so much a problem. 50 to 55, you start to see reduced brass life. And from 55 to 60, uh, you see a real reduction in uh, brass life. Now those are guesstimates. I don't have any uh, pressure measure and equipment. That's just from my observations. And again, that is my opinion. For those of you who are unfamiliar with a break action rifle, unlike a bolt action, which has at least two lugs uh, that engage uh, the uh, receiver, uh, the break action rifles only have a single lug at the bottom of the barrel. So there's a lot of flex in this system. When you fire this rifle, that barrel springs forward and uh, that opens this gap. Your brass will expand uh, to fill that gap. So each time you fire this, resize it and reload it, uh, this brass will stretch and it'll get thin right here uh, where this thick case head joins the thin side wall and eventually you'll have a case head separation. The photo that you see is a partial case head separation. I've done a lot of research on the subject of brass life in the Encore. I know that Mike Belm says that from four to 12 thousandths per firing is not unusual with the Encore depending on how hot you load it. I watched a match grade machine video where they were talking about uh, what uh, cartridges they would not chamber an Encore barrel for and they were talking about the short magnums and so on. Uh, but in that video, they measured brass growth uh, with factory 6.5 Creedmoor ammo and uh, they were getting six thousandths per fire. Now in one of the uh, online long range hunting forums, I found an article where somebody wrote in about brass life with the 25 alt 6 and this is uh, an excerpt from a reply from their Encore guru and he says simply put you may need to trim your case after each firing and may have to replace your cases after three to four firings which parallels my experience just watch for any case head separation signs which are not that uncommon with the Encore design just the nature of the beast if you understand that and can live with it the Encore is a great rifle but it does have its limits and issues to deal with and live with. I've measured brass from factory rounds fired in this rifle and I get about eight thousandths brass growth. Compare that to my hand loads, uh, the uh, 180 grain bullet uh, loaded to 2700 feet per second which is uh, what the factory loads 180 grain bullet to. Uh, I get about the same eight thousandths brass growth. Now I can load that 180 grain bullet down to say 2550 and extend uh, the life of my brass by a couple firings. I get maybe six firings at that velocity, but that's down in uh, 308 uh, territory, and uh, I'm not really happy with that. Uh, good news is uh, that 30 alt 6 brass is readily available. It's not very expensive, so it is something that I can live with if there is no solution. I experimented with different bullet weights and about every powder that is suitable uh, for the 30 alt 6 cartridge. Uh, one thing that I did try was Stayball 6.5 and Superformance, both powders. Uh, if you look at the load data, are shown to produce more velocity uh, with less pressure, uh, but that didn't pan out in the real world. When I reached factory velocities with both powders, uh, my brass growth was about the same. 
As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, Steve, one of my viewers, suggested the Ackley Improved Chamber as a possible solution uh, to my brass life problem. He has a 3040 Craig AI uh, barrel, and uh, he shoots the Barnes 130 grain bullet at about 3,000 feet per second. He says he's getting uh, 10 uh, reloads on a piece of brass or more, and uh, he believes that he has room uh, to uh, raise that velocity some and still have good brass life. I've known about the Ackley Improved cartridge for some time, but I never considered uh, the effect of less bolt thrust on brass life in the Encore. Uh, I flirted with the idea of reaming this chamber. I can rent a hand reamer uh, and do it myself. I'm not sure it'd be cost effective uh, to have a gunsmith do that. Uh, but if any of you guys have experience with Ackley Improves, if you'd drop a comment, let me know. I know there are a lot of 280 uh, Ackley Improves out there in the Encore, and uh, that's a high-pressure round. So if you have experience with that, let me know what your brass life is. Or if you've had experience actually uh, hand reaming a chamber uh, to Ackley Improved, let me know how that turned out for you. Uh, that it would either encourage me uh, to go ahead with the project or to just scrap it. One of the things in my conversation with Steve that got my attention was uh, the effect of chamber finish on bolt thrust. Uh, that prompted me to do some research, uh, and I came across this interesting article on Varmint Al's website. I posted a link to that in the video description. Check it out when you get an opportunity. Uh, most of that article's over my head, uh, but I did come away uh, with two things. One, a rough chamber finish will decrease bolt thrust, uh, but uh, it will also increase brass growth because uh, as the case grabs the chamber wall, pressure will follow the path of least resistance. The case will stretch at the case head uh, right where it uh, joins the thin wall of the brass, and that's where you'll have your cased head uh, separation. The second thing is that a smooth polished chamber will increase bolt thrust uh, but uh, it will decrease uh, brass growth. So that kind of goes against the Ackley Improved idea but I'm not taking into account uh, the uh, sharper shoulder angle on the Ackley Improved cartridges and I know that does uh, affect it. Uh, case in point would be the 6.5 Creed Moore. It's a modern cartridge with a sharp shoulder angle. And uh, as the uh, MGM test showed, uh, brass growth with that was six thousandths. And uh, with a 30 alt 6, I'm having eight or nine thousandths brass growth uh, in a new piece of brass. So the results of the test in that article are computer generated. They're not real world. So in the name of science, I decided to conduct my own little experiment. Uh, I did some reading and I found that a lot of people use 400 grit sandpaper and put a cross hatch in their chamber uh, to increase grip on their brass. Uh, I didn't want to do something that I couldn't undo and 400 grit scratches are pretty deep. I'd have to do a lot of polishing to get rid of those. This chamber is already larger, uh, I think, than it should be. That may be part of my problem. Uh, so. I thought about it a while and I made a plug uh, to plug the barrel and protect the shoulder area of my chamber and I used a really fine sandblasting medium uh, to uh, produce a rough chamber uh, and when I say uh, fine uh, I mean that the finish on that chamber was about twice as coarse as the uh, finish on this receiver. I fired three rounds with a 180 grain bullet at 2,700 feet per second in the rough chamber. You can see the photo of the brass. You'll notice uh, the marks uh, on the brass case uh, where there are high and low spots in that chamber. It appears to be marks from the reamer actually cutting the chamber. Uh, but brass growth uh, with the rough chamber was 12 thousandths. Next, I polished out the chamber. I started with some 1,000 grit, then 2,500, then 3,000. Didn't take much at all to get it smooth. Uh, that's not a super polished chamber, but that's pretty slick. I then fired three rounds with the same bullet and the same powder charge, and my brass growth with the smooth chamber uh, was eight to nine thousandths, which puts me back uh, where the chamber was originally. So 
uh, there is a significant difference between the rough chamber and the smooth chamber in this brake action. As a matter of reference, there's a photo of three pieces of brass on the left is the original chamber in the center is the rough chamber. On the right uh, is the polished chamber. There is a difference between uh, the polished chamber and the original chamber. It could benefit some from a higher polish, maybe, but I do think that would just be insignificant because I really need a reduction of three to say five thousandths brass growth in order for it to be meaningful. A quick summary of my thoughts on brass life. Now the Encore is a reloader's dream. Uh, with all the aftermarket barrel manufacturers out there, the sky is the limit when it comes to chamberings for this rifle. Uh, but Brass Life is, for me, the fly in the ointment. Uh, just to give you a point of reference to compare with my bolt actions, I've measured brass growth and it's anywhere from one to three thousandths. So you can see there's uh, quite a difference there. So be prepared uh, for uh, reduced brass life uh, if you're going to purchase an Encore and reload for it. So guys, if you have any solutions, I'd be delighted to hear them. I have considered using premium brass, but I'm not sure if the additional firings would offset the cost. I've also considered an oversized hinge pin to take up a little bit of slack in the action. Uh, but at most, that would probably only be a thousandths uh, or a thousandths and a half. Uh, I will say I'm not against oversized hinge pins. I did talk about those in another video. They're just not for me. So guys, uh, if you're not a subscriber to my channel, do that now. I will have more Encore content in the future. Thanks again for watching.